right, please be seated. The book of Psalms, Psalm 128 this morning. Psalm 128. Psalm 128 is where we're going to be. The title of the message is A Real Man. What is a real man? I um, spoke a few weeks ago about what is a woman, and uh, today we're going to talk about what's a real man, and a real man is not a woman, and a woman's not a real man, so what is a real man? You know, I, I'm going to say this, in our day and time, there really are very few real men, um, and I think that's a lot to do with what our, why our country's in the shape it's in. Because we don't have any men that's going to stand up and, and say what's right and do what's right. And uh, one factor of the decline of the United States of America is the lack of masculinity. Uh, we live in a day where men shave their legs and women shave their head. It's ridiculous. It sure is. We live in a day where men are encouraged to get... you got to get in touch with your feminine side. We live in a day where women have actually forgotten how to be a lady. It's, it's, that's as much disconcerting as, as it is that we don't have enough men. We don't have enough of real ladies for that matter. But the message today is about real men. You know, today's men uh, have been criticized and shamed so much to where they've, many of them have abdicated their, their correct and godly and biblical role in the home and in society. Uh, many, many men have been reduced to, you know, just a, a yes man and who says yes ma'am to everything. And uh, let me tell you, we need some real men. Uh, we, we need to step up, uh, men, and be the real men of God that we need to be. We need some godly men serving a great God. And uh, that's what it's going to take. Uh, to get our society, to get our country back to God. Real men. You know, what comes to mind when you hear the term real men? Well, you know, a lot of people think about athletes, you know. Let me tell you something. Just because you're an athlete don't mean you're a real man. I mean, you may be strong. You may be fast. You might can hit a ball or pitch a ball or shoot a basketball or throw a football or whatever. You might be uh, all that. Listen, that don't make you a real man. And a lot, most, most of them really not real men. People think about movie stars. You know, these good-looking movie stars and things. You know, these hunks. I'm thinking, well, that, that don't make you a real man just because you're a movie star. Matter of fact, most of them are worthless too when it comes to being a real man. Uh, TV stars, whatever. I'll tell you what the true standard of manhood is, what real masculinity is. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the real man. And when, you know those times he went in the temple and cleansed it out? Can I tell you right now? Nobody stood up to him. You know, we, wanna, we talk about all these superheroes, and it's all well and good, you know. I mean, I watched Batman when I was little, and I thought that's the greatest thing going, you know. But let me tell you something. We got all these superheroes. The true superhero is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's coming one day to set everything straight. You think he set everything straight in the temple. He's coming back one day. And guess what? Everybody is going to back up from him. Even if you remember the Garden of Gethsemane. When uh, 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 great story. When they came to arrest him. And remember uh, they said are, are you Jesus? He said I am. And they all backed up and fell down. That's, that's, that's what happens when you're around. That's, that's a true man. And I'll tell you what, the real men in our world today are those who love the Lord Jesus Christ, who serve the Lord Jesus Christ, who imitate the Lord Jesus Christ. Real men. All right, we're going to read, and then I'll, I'll share a few things uh, more with you as far as introduction. And then we'll get into three, part, three points of the message. I don't have them up on the board, so you'll, you're going to have to listen if you want to write these down here today. Blessed is everyone, Psalm 128, verse 1, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. 
Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. Father, again, thank you for your word. Thank you for these uh, thoughts that we have here this morning. And may, Lord, we listen well. May we desire to learn. May we open our hearts and minds to learn. And, Lord, to see ourselves as you see us. And, Lord, again, if there's a person here that doesn't know for sure about their eternal destiny today, they would get that solved and get it dealt with. Lord, for us who are Christians here today, again, speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. I have learned that the average man is 5 foot 9 inches tall and weighs 173 pounds. Now, this is average, so don't say, well, that don't apply to me. All right, so just average. The average man is married. The average man is 1.8 years older than his wife and would marry her again. The average man has not completed college. The average man prefers showering to a bath. Amen? Amen. We have a bathtub in our house. That's in my wife's bathroom. My bathroom has a shower in it. Anyhow, the average man spends about 7.2 hours a week eating. That sounds a little excessive to me, but uh, that's what they say. The average man does not know his cholesterol count, but for most of them, it's over 200. The average man takes out the garbage in his household, unless he has some kids that do that, but anyhow, he doesn't. The average man eats his corn on the cob in circles, not straight across, and he prefers his steak medium. The average man cannot whistle by inserting his fingers in his mouth. The average man prefers that his toilet tissue unwind over rather than under. We're just sharing some some thoughts here. The average man, if he wants to live long, puts the toilet seat down every time after he uses it as well. And the average man will not stop to ask for directions when he's in the car. So we know all of those things. Now, if you've been around long enough, you've heard some of these things, you know, from the past where real men do certain things. Well, here's some of these things. Real men drink their coffee black. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a real man then. Real, real men don't cry. Well, that's not true either. Real men don't laugh. That's not true either. They're straight-faced, serious all the time. Real men wear cowboy boots. Well, again, I'm not a real man. Real men drive trucks. You've heard that before. I don't have a truck. Real men know how to start a fire. Yeah, I know how to do that. Get some gasoline and a match. (laughs) Real men know how to tie a knot. Real men don't wear pink. You ever heard that before? Well, I, I think I got one pink shirt. Real men are good with their hands and they know how to fix stuff. Amen. You know, that's good. Nothing wrong with that. Real men are mechanical. Real men know how to hunt and fish. Real men are grill masters. We can work that grill and give our wife the night off. Kind of a joke in our household. Real men are athletic and they know sports. Maybe. Real men are muscular. Well, that leaves a bunch of us out too. Real men don't have long hair or piercings. They all agree with that. 
Now, we hear all of those things, and let me tell you, the problem with those qualities is they really don't have anything to do with, with whether or not you're a real man or not. It's not that these qualities are necessarily bad. Uh, many of them are good, but they don't really define real manhood. And if you think about it, Jesus didn't have a whole lot of those qualities either. I mean, I don't, I don't know, but I don't think Jesus drank coffee. I don't think Jesus wore boots. He wore sandals. Jesus didn't drive a big truck. Jesus didn't know anything about sports that we play. And, um, I, you know, some of those other things. Who knows? Matter of fact, we think sometimes, uh, you know, those qualities that people talk about being a real man, they're more like a real woman. Because uh, real women wear boots. Real women can drive trucks too, right? Yeah. Real women can wear pink, right? I mean, most of them do. Uh, many women are very mechanical and very handy. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, those, that's all good. Those are just kind of social constructs, you know. Uh, uh, these are ideas that people have, you know, put out there over time. And people kind of buy into it. Well, they, that's, that's just from man's point of view. Yeah. Okay? And, you know, it's all well and good. Uh, but I don't think those things define true manhood. Now, the principles that I'm getting ready to give you can apply to men and women here this morning. But I want to especially apply these to men today. Because there's a lot of confusion on what is a man and what's a woman and everything else. So we're going to talk about what's a real man here today. All right? What is a real man? And I believe that God is looking for real men. He's looking for dedicated men. He's, matter of fact, he's been looking for dedicated men in every generation since the world began. And, and listen to me. It's because we had some real men stand up in this country 200 and something years ago now is why we have freedoms in this country today. That's right. I'm thankful for all those hundreds and thousands of real men that fought for our country. And stood up for what was right. Now, you know, today, uh, there's a lot of gender confusion. And uh, I got news for you. Uh, there is, there's a whole lot more to being a, a real man than just being born a male, though. But God made you a man. God made you a woman. Be glad about it, as I said a few weeks ago. And be all you can be. And today, we're going to talk about being a real man from the scriptures. Three words I have for you from this particular passage of scripture. They all begin with the letter F and, and you're gonna see them uh, here as we talk about that. Number one, a real man is faithful. A real man is faithful or full of faith uh, as well, all right? Now, look at verse number one. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. All right, so to be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ and to be faithful to this world, you have to, first of all, have faith in Jesus. A personal relationship with Christ. Uh, you must have a salvation that is seeable. You must have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ and you are saved. And it's not just enough to be saved. You must make him the Lord of your life if you want to be a real man. You must fear the Lord and you must walk in his ways. Now, uh, 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 the Bible says to follow him or to walk in his ways. Blessed is the man that walketh in his ways. A real man uh, is not a man who everybody in the household has to do everything the way he says. No, a real man is in the household and he's doing everything God tells him to do. That's a real man. Uh, if we're going to be the leader that God wants us to be, we must do things his way. Real men are faithful in every aspect of their life especially to their families, especially to their wives. And, and listen, there's plenty of unfaithfulness in our world today, but God wants us to be faithful in every aspect of our life, but especially in our homes and especially to our wives. You know, men are out here and they're looking for happiness. And they think they're, you know, the grass is greener on the other side. I got news for you. That's a lie of the devil. 
It's an absolute lie of the devil. And I want you to listen to me, married man, here this morning. Listen to this. A married man who is a godly man, who is a real man, does not have time to look for other women. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Listen to me. If you're a real man, you don't have time to look for other women because you are too busy looking for new ways to love the one you have. And to enjoy and to rejoice with the wife of thy youth, as the scriptures say, and to be faithful. Secondly, a real man is fruitful. Fruitful. It says there in verse number two, for thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Eat the labor of thine hands. Fruitful. So a man is, a real man is faithful. A real man is fruitful. Now it talks about eating there. It talks about eating. Well, we live in a world today where we've got uh, too many people eating for free. Uh, the Bible says that if you don't work, you ought not to eat. And uh, we, we've talked about that many times. And it's very sad that we've got a lot of people, even a lot of men, who are just, uh, and a lot of men are, are uh, hanging on to, to people, other people who will pay their bills and take care of them in some kind of way. I heard a story this week. This, this was a family many years ago that visited our church for a number of months. And uh, it was, a, it was a, a woman and three kids, and it was uh, then a man uh, started coming with them. And uh, they came for a little while, and this is many years ago. Most of you won't even remember and know who I'm even talking about. But uh, they, they came for a little while. Anyhow, one day they said, uh, we, we want to get married. They were living together, and they said, we want to get married. I said, well, I'll talk to you about it. And so I talked to him about it, and, and I told him, I said, well, I will not perform the ceremony because you're living together. If you will separate and live apart for a number of months, then I, I'll, uh, I'll think about performing the ceremony. So, um, you know, they, they didn't like that. And so they quit coming. Well, I found out this week they went ahead and got married without Pastor Trammell. Fine, you know, do your thing. They're now divorced. It was a miserable three or four years or so. And come to find out, the man was a good for nothing. He was just, uh, he wanted a free place to stay. His wife was a hardworking woman. He just wanted a free place to stay. And I said, how sad that is. It's too bad she didn't figure that out ahead of time. A real man's going to get up in the morning. And I know, you know, I know many people retired and some people disabled, that kind of thing. But I'm telling you, a real man's going to get up in the morning. He's going to provide for his family. He is going to provide for his family. Now, listen, I know that, you know, many women in our, our, our world today, many ladies work. And I, I got that. I, you know, that's fine. Uh, but I got news for you. It is, I believe it's the husband's main responsibility to provide for his family. The husband's responsibility. And I got news for you, that wife and those kids, if you love them with all your heart and you're the real man that you ought to be, you will do whatever it takes to provide for them, to be fruitful for them. If it takes one job, if it takes two jobs, if it takes three jobs, if it, whatever it takes, you're going to make sure that your family is provided for. That's a real man, not somebody who sucks off of everybody else and the government for that matter and everything else. Now, again, I understand that some people can't work and that's all well and good. But if you can work and you don't work, shame on you. Because you got them wife, you got that wife, that loving wife, and you got those kids that it talks about there in verse number three. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thy, thy children, like all the plants round about thy table. Now, in those days, they had as many kids as they could. You know why? Does anybody know why? So they'd all work on the farm. Because that was the big deal. Now, I don't have a farm at my house. 
So, you know, I don't need that many kids, I don't guess. But, uh, you know, if you have plenty, have at it. My uh, mother's family, my great-grandmother had 11 kids. And out of that 11 kids come a whole bunch of them. Uh, and, and to this day, there's a whole bunch of uh, those folks. Well, praise the Lord. And it's all well and good. You know, when you get up in the morning and you go to work and you work hard and you do a good job and then you get your paycheck at the end of the week, there's a sense of achievement, is there not? Uh, you get up in the morning and it's time to cut the grass and you cut the grass and you make it look good. Let me tell you something, there's a sense of achievement in that. Uh, you you uh, have to clean the house, you know. Uh, there's a sense of achievement in that. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to be right, to do right, we're going to do it. And we're going to be fruitful. There's a lot of fulfillment in being productive. And I believe that God will bless your life for it. So a real man is faithful. A real man is fruitful. And then thirdly, a real man is fearful. Is fearful. How many of you men here this morning would love to be attractive to your family? All of us. Every one of us. Would love to be attractive to our family. And let me tell you something how you can be attractive to your family. It's because you're a man who's a real man who fears God. Who fears God. Verse 4. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. That, that you have that character that is visible to others. And they, and they see that godliness in you. And they see that fearfulness of God in you. And then God blesses that. Do you know that you cannot be a godly man? You cannot be a real man without a healthy fear of the Lord. Right. Now, what, is, what does this fear mean? You know, a lot of people have a misunderstanding uh, about this fear. Is it something that I'm supposed to be scared of God? You know, there's a lot of people who are scared of God. Uh, I've even had people say, well, you know, I, I really don't want to come to your church because the roof will cave in if I come to your church. There's some people who say, you know, I'm just waiting for God to strike me down. You know, I'm waiting. To, anything I do bad, you know, God's just going to hit me with a lightning bolt. That's not my God. That's not my God. That's not the God of the Bible. You know, an electrician, an electrician has a fear of electricity. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. But it's a healthy fear, right? Now, that does not keep them from working in the elect electrical business, but I got news for you. They have a healthy fear of electricity and what it can do to you. Uh, a lifeguard has a healthy fear of water and what it can do to you, but that don't keep them away from the water, but they have a healthy fear of that. Uh, uh, they, they don't avoid it. They, have a, uh, uh, they respect it highly. So that's what I'm trying to uh, get in your mind this morning, that we don't avoid God because we fear Him. We highly respect Him because we fear Him. We have that reverence, that awe for God Himself. You know, fear is not sheer terror. You remember the story of, of Jesus uh, giving out the five talents, the two talents, the one talent, the, five, the man with five talents uh, got five more, the man with two, more, uh, with two got two more, and the man with one did what? He went and hid it in the ground, and when he was, uh, had, to, had to be accountable for that, you remember what he said? He said, well, I was scared. I was scared. I was fearful. See, he looked at his master who had given him that talent, which was God, of course, but he, he looked at his master as a vindictive despot who delighted putting people on the spot and wreaking vengeance on them. Now, that kind of fear is the wrong kind of fear. And all that will do is impoverish your family, cause you to be insecure, discontented, unforgiving, unloving, and spineless. But God's, the fear of God is not the fear that makes you run away from God. It's a blessing instead of a curse. God is not vindictive out to get us. Hard, hard to get along with. Imagine that. You know, people say, well, you know, I fear God because he's hard to get along with. No, he's not. Matter of fact, uh, the, the fear of the Lord is going to cause us to uh, obey his commandments. Listen, you remember old Moses when he went to that burning bush? Here's, here, imagine this bush is on fire right here. It's not burning up. And Moses, when he went to that bush... 
He had a healthy respect for God. You remember God even said, this is holy ground. Take off your shoes. And he did that. And he had a great respect and reverence and awe of God. You remember Isaiah over in Isaiah chapter 6, it says that he saw God. And you remember after he saw God, the Bible says that he used three words in a row. Holy, holy, holy. John, in the book of Revelation, when he saw the glorified Christ, the Bible says that he fell to his face. He fell to his face. That's a healthy fear of God. Moses didn't run from that bush. Oh, that was some kind of sight. Isaiah didn't run from God. John didn't run from God. They prostrated themselves. They were humble. They worshiped. They gladly and faithfully served him. And that's what a real man will do. We fear God. But it's a healthy fear that causes us to run to him and to be all that we can be for him. Uh, We honor him. It is constructive. It draws us to God. It does not drive us away. It stimulates responsible action. Uh, 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 it, It doesn't breed idleness. It causes us to reach out, not to pull in. It helps us to serve others and diminish our selfishness. And it demolishes all the other fears in our life. Because we know that God is in control. I'll tell you this much. If you don't fear God, you cannot live in Wisdomville. Did you know that? If you don't fear God, you can't live in Wisdomville. You know why? Because the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And and that's in Proverbs 1.7. In Proverbs 9.10 it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You can't live in Wisdomville if you don't fear God. You can't even have real joy and real happiness and real fulfillment fulfillment and real meaning in your life if you do not fear God. The Bible says fear God in Ecclesiastes 12. Read it this morning. Fear God. Keep His commandments. That's the whole duty of man. You remember old Solomon. He had got away from the Lord and he said vanity of vanities. All is vanity. He got to the end of, of that particular book and he said here's the whole thing. Here's the whole thing. Fear God and keep His commandments. You'll have that fulfillment in your life. And I'll tell you this much. If you don't fear God, you set yourself at odds against God. Because God is opposed to the proud and he gives grace to the humble. Now, one thing we didn't mention earlier about real men, you know, what our world says. Real men are supposed to be strong and not to fear anything, not to be scared of anything. That's a real man. Not scared of anything. Well, I say that's quite the contrary because a real man begins actually with the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. You wonder why our world's in a mess? There's a lack of real men. There's a lack of masculinity. There's a lack of the fear of God in our world today. Romans 3.18 says there's no fear of God before their eyes. But I got news for you. That's a great promise there in verse number four. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. You want to be blessed? You want to look attractive to your family and to the world? Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Satan promises us everything the world has to offer, but God has made you a promise that will outlast the world. Fear God. You know, what good is it, folks? To have everything this world offers and then lose your own soul. That's not a good trade-off, is it? You know what worship, I mean, what fear of the Lord involves? Listen to me. Fear of the Lord involves fear of offending Him. That we do not want to offend God by our lives. By our words, by our thoughts, by our actions. By our lack of actions. To fear, to offend God. Imagine that. You know, we we live in a world where everybody gets offended about everything. Well, let me tell you something. The one person, and and that's fine, you know. But I, I don't mind offending other people. I just don't want to offend God. Listen, I don't want to hurt God. Think about that. That's called fear. I fear the Lord. I'm in awe and reverence of Him so much that I, and in His holiness, that I do not want to hurt Him in any way, shape, or form. 
And I certainly don't want to shame him. I don't want to offend my God. I don't want to hurt my God. I don't want to shame my God. That's what it has to do with fear the Lord. If you're going to be a real man, you've got to have that fixed faith, that fixed heart, that fixed assurance. You've got to surrender to the Lord. Walk in His ways. Labor hard. Be fruitful. And then have a reverent fear of Him. And i got news for you. People will say, hey, that guy is a real man. That's a real man. It's not some athlete or movie star or something like that. No, it's a man who fears the Lord. That is a real man who is faithful and fruitful. A college professor was teaching his students about a certain man in history who ended up with no country to call his own. He asked the question, he said, what could be sadder than a man without a country? A young lady in the class piped up and said, a country without a man. And how true that is. A country without a real man. Now, this girl probably had other thoughts on her mind. She didn't want to live in a country without a man, I guess. Probably on the lookout for one. But I got news for you. It's a very serious problem for a country to have a shortage of real, godly men. I'm thankful at Hope Baptist Church. We got a church full of them. But I want us to continue that way. These young people, I want them to grow up to be good, godly, real men that loves God and serves God and serves others and serves their family and is faithful, fruitful, and fearful. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Do you have a fear of offending God today? Do you have a fear of hurting Him or shaming Him in some way? Boy, we should have that. We should say, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that because that is not something that my God would like. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to watch that. I'm not going to listen to that. I'm not going to be involved in that because that's something that would hurt or shame or offend my God. That's the fear of God. Our speech, our actions, our words what we do, where we go, what we watch, what we think about. Do you have a fear of offending and shaming and hurting God? A real man does. A real man is faithful, fruitful, fervent in his faith and faithfulness. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as Savior, you can be saved today. We'd love to show you from God's Word how you can be saved. If there's other needs in your life, our altar is open for you. Father, it's a, again a wonderful passage and just wonderful thoughts here today. Thank you for them. Lord, may something that's been said here today in some way, shape, or form encourage us in our walk with you. And Lord, help us to grow closer to you. If there's, uh, again, somebody that needs to be saved, I pray they'll come. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with us? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed.